Uh, dear participants, uh, we are starting our next uh, discussion for the project Distance Graphs and Turan's Theorem. So, Lisa, please, you may start. Okay, now let's start with the first problem. And the first problem, we need to prove that the magic number of a graph is The first problem, let's prove that the chromatic number of graph is greater or equal than the click number. Why so? Uh, let us mention the greatest click of a graph. Uh, in this click, the vertices have to be connected uh, with a, an edge, and that's why they must be painted in two different colors. So we need at least uh, the same number of colors than the number of vertices in the greatest clip. So the chromatic number is greater or equal than the click number. Now let's go to problem two and prove that the chromatic number is greater or than the number of vertices divided by the independence number of the same graph. Why so? Let us prove a bit, uh, that is a bit different thing. We'll prove that the chromatic number multiplied by the independence number is greater or equal than the number of vertices. Why so? Uh, let us imagine all the vertices colored in one color. Uh, none of these vertices are connected. That's why uh, the number of these vertices is not greater than the independence number as they form an anti click. So uh, each, the number of vertices of each color are not greater than the independence number. Then, if we multiply the number of colors and the independence number, we, we get not less than the number of vertices. Okay, let's move to number three. If delta is the biggest degree of a vertice, let us prove that the chromatic number is less or equal delta plus one. Why so? Let's just start painting anyhow, but not exactly anyhow. We'll paint in the one of colors from one to delta plus one. And on each step, uh, only, and on each step, only at most delta colors are contradicted as on each step, each vertex has only delta edges. So at least one color is possible and we can paint this, we can give this vertex this color. Okay, let us move now to the next page to problem four. Uh, here we have to prove that uh, if there is a graph and its click number is one or two, so there are no triangles, the number of edges is not greater than um, lower bound and divided by two lower bound, multiplied by and divided by two upper bound. Uh, and we also have to prove that this there is some graph where this number of edges exists. Let us start from this 
first of all, let's notice that these two numbers, the lower bound and the upper bound, give n is being summed. Uh, that's because if the number n is even there, just half of n and half of n and then sum as n. And if n is odd, uh, this one and n equals um, 2k plus 1. So the first one is k, and the second thing is k plus 1. So in sum, it equals n, equal n. And now let's draw a graph. That will be two sets of vertices. The first set will consist of lower bound of these vertices. The second set will consist of n divided by two upper bound. And all the vertices from different sets would be connected. This gives us exactly the necessary number of edges. And uh, also, there are no triangles in this graph as. You know, as we may see, all the cycles in this graph, they have even length. And now, then, and now let's prove that the number of vertices is not greater than this amount. And we'll prove it by induction. We'll have induction on n, a bit different uh, with the variance even n and odd n. Uh, so let's start with the base of induction. It's pretty similar with n equals two or n equals one. Uh, that's, uh, that's if n equals two, it's true that you have only one edge, if n equals one, we have zero edges and it courts with the number we have here. Oh, and now let's do the step. For the step, let us find some edge with two vertices. And let's look on this edge and on all the other component of a, of a graph we have. Here might also be some edges. So uh, by the assumption of induction in, the, in this part, we have at most this amount of edges. Mm -hmm. And we have the induction from n minus two to n. We follow this step. And one divided by n, divided once more. So in this part, we have at most this number of edges. And now let's think how many edges we have here. These are all the edges connected with those two vertices. Uh, we have one edge we fixed, and we also have, and we also know that each vertice, which is not vertice A or vertice B, can't be connected with both of them. So for each vertex C in the set, only one edge to vertices A or B is possible. So here might be at most n minus two vertices. And now all we need to prove is that one plus 
n minus 2 plus this. is not greater than this. Um, to prove this, we'll need to see two different variants when n is even and when n is odd. I'll go to another page. Okay, let us start with the even case and the odd case will be the same. So in the even case, n equals to k and we have one plus two k minus two plus uh, hmm? yeah. Plus k minus two. There's some problems with my n. Yeah, squared. Which is not greater than k minus one plus a minus one squared. And once it, it's equal to it, and that's equal to a squared. And that equals to k divided by two. like this it comes and the odd case is all the same now let's continue with problem number five here in problem number five there is some nice assumption that when we have a graph uh, and the graph has some edges we have also some anti edges, the edges we don't have, for example, if it's friendship, uh, that is lack of friendship between some people. And we can think of a graph like of a, always of a complete graph, but with edges of two different colors. And, uh, and the other way to think is that one color exists and one color, edges of one color exist and edges of other color do not exist. So, continue with problem number five. Let us think to an anti graph, to a graph. This anti graph, in this anti graph, if the, let's think of a graph that has click number less than three, then its anti graph will have independence number less than three. Let us denote, let's note the anti graph with let's let's denote it like this and also if the number of vertices of this graph is n the number of vertices of this graph is all the same and if number of edges of this graph is not more than this number then we'll then as we have this assumption, the number of edges in the antigraph will be greater than this. Because this binomial coefficient is the number of all possible 
This binomial coefficient is number of all edges in the complete graph, and these are the number of edges we might not have in it. Okay, and now let's move to problem six. It's quite similar to problems four and five, but here we think of a graph with an independence number not greater than k, and let us think that the independence number is exactly k. Why we can do so? Uh, imagine it's less than k. Uh, we can remove some edges, and as we remove one edge, the independence number, uh, its maximum growth is plus one. Uh, so we can remove and remove edges until the independence number will be exactly k, and also uh, the number of edges will be less or equal than the first graph we had. So if we prove for the graph we received from the first one with removing edges, if we prove the theorem for it, we can also prove it for the first graph. So now we think that the independence number is exactly k. Uh, let us find the greatest independent set, the set of car vertices, none of which are connected. And also let's look to let's look on all the other vertices of the graph. Here are n minus. K vertices. And for each vertice in this set, it must have at least one edge to the independent set of K vertices. Uh, if this, if it's not like that, we could have moved the vertice to the, this independent set and make it bigger, bigger than. K, uh, which can't be held in our graph. So each vertice from this set has an edge to this set. Mm -hmm. That's how we get at least n minus k edges. Mm -hmm. And now let's continue with the set of n minus k vertices. In this uh, set, we may also find an anti click or a big independent set of k vertices. If we can only find smaller ones, we could remove some. Uh, edges uh, with, without loss of generality. And for the set, we may do the same thing. And now we get n minus 2k edges more than n minus 3k. And how long could we do the steps? We can do the steps until there are some vertices in our graph. So we can do it for and divided by k times. And all we need now is to make a sum of this arithmetic progression. We have sum in a beautiful way from for i from one to and divided by k lower bound. And minus i okay. so by summing this having this equation we get exactly what we need to prove in the problem get exactly and by by okay no problem yeah yeah 
is true. Here is multiplied just with k. Now we sum two times first we sum all the ends and we get n multiplied by this thing. And then we have minus k and sum of arithmetic progression from one to uh, lower bound of n divided by k. So we get exactly this. And all we need to do now is to prove that this number of edges is the best number of edges we could have imagined. So there is some graph with exactly the same number of edges. Uh, how we can do so for this? Let us think that n equals um, m plus r. We just divide it and R is a rest and R is between zero and K like this. And we'll have, as we had in the, in the problem number four, we'll have some components and exactly R of them will be Я хочу сказать, ровно R из них будут uh, единичкой. And all, all the others. Okay, exactly R of them will have K plus one elements and all the others will have all the others M minus R components. Uh, I don't know, not like this. I have, will have M plus one and all the other K minus R components will have exactly M elements and all the vertices from different sets will be connected and they give us exactly the same number of edges. Okay. Let us move a bit further, further with distance graphs and think of problems seven, eight, and nine. And first, we might prove the, the distance graph can have a subgraph K4, a complete subgraph on four vertices. Why so? If a distance graph has a triangle in it, this triangle is a right simple triangle with all the same edges. So if we have this construction in our graph, then let us think of a triangle ABC. And the point O is such that uh, the distance from O to A equals the distance from O to B equals the distance from O to C. So is the center of the Circumscribed, circumscribed circle for this triangle. However, in a right triangle, the radius of the circumcircle doesn't equal the side. And that's the contradiction we have in the seventh problem. In the eighth problem, we need to prove that in a distance graph, there can't be a graph like this. Subgraph like this. Um, let's assume that it's possible. Then point, then let's imagine the circles with radius one and centers O and Q. Uh, these two circles 
if points O and Q are diff different, have only two points of intersection. However, here they must have three. That's the contradiction in problem number eight. And moving to problem number nine. Here, let's start. There are some, there are many triangles. The first triangle is drawn like this. Then the second triangle, there is only one way to draw it. It's like this. The third triangle, we also have only one way to draw it. It's like this. And as all the angles here equal 60, then this line is a line and this angle is 880. So we can't find another point here. Such as this of this triangle would be one and this side of this triangle would be one. That's the contradic contradiction here. And moving to problem number 10. Uh, first of all, we have to draw a planar graph, which is not distance graph. That's the K4, for example. It's planar as it's drawn here. And we've just proved that it's not a distance graph. And now there is a fact that the K5, the complete graph on five vertices, is not planar. However, we can draw a similar graph and make it distance. How can we do it? Let us mention that the star in the center of the K5, all its sides length is one. And also, let me draw five more vertices. This would be like this, like this, like this, like this, and like this. In this graph, all the edges lengths are one. However, this graph is not planar as it's uh, similar to K5. Okay, not all the distance graphs are planar. And it's very important to remember that a graph is planar if it can be drawn in some way. Because many people think that, for example, this distance graph of Two similar, uh, with two similar sides of length one, similar segments, that this graph is not planar. And because there is an intersection here. However, it is planar as we only might draw an isomorphic graph and which will be planar. So we only we have to draw it like this, for example. Okay, that's all I wanted to say about distance graphs. Let's move to another part and talk about some specific type of distance graphs, about C, J, about G, N, 3, 1. Have to talk about these problems. Okay. What's the graph? We have, let's imagine a set of n elements and all its subsets of three elements. And we, and these subsets. That, that will be the vertices and all the edges are the pairs of subsets that have one element in common. These are all the edges. And now let's count some characteristics of this graph. The first characteristics is number of vertices. It's such a binomial coefficient. Efficient. Okay, now let's move to number of edges uh, e 
each. Let's firstly count how many edges does each vertex have. Each vertex have each, ver each vertex has uh, three elements in a subset it came from. And how can we draw an edge here? We must choose one of these three elements. We can do it in three different ways. And we must choose two more elements. We can do it in this number of ways because we need to choose two elements more out of the n minus three elements remaining. So totally the number of edges is three multiplied by this and multiplied by this. But in this way, we counted each edge twice, so we have divided by three. Okay, now let's count the number of triangles. We know how many edges there are, and let's count in how many triangles each edge is. If we have an edge, we can have it in the triangles in two ways. The first way is to have uh, one more vertex subset uh, with a, it contains the same element, the element of intersection of the first two subsets. And the second way of having it is having some more, one more element somewhere here, and if it is connected like this. So let's look on one edge. In how many ways could we make a triangle of it in a first, uh, with a, in the first mean of making a triangle? These are This number of ways is we have to choose from n minus five elements, two elements. And in how many ways can we do this triangle? We have to choose this exact element. We can do it in n minus five different ways. And we also have to choose uh, how to connect the set to our previous ones. We can do it in two different ways with this set and then two different ways with this set. So that will have four different ways to do it. That's we counted in how many triangles uh, uh, is each edge. So we have to multiply it by the number of edges. And then as each triangle contains three edges and we counted it for each of these edges, we have to divide it all by three. So now we've counted the number of vertices, the number of edges, and the number of triangles. Let's move to the okay. Let's move to the independence number of this graph. Let's say that two vertices are strongly connected if the sets they correspond to have two elements in common. They're not strongly, to be honest, the, these vertices in our graph are not connected. They don't have an edge between them, but we'll say that they're strongly connected. Let's imagine the biggest independent set in our graph. And let's divide it on different parts, on different components of strong connection. Uh, this means that all the, how might these component, components look? Uh, the component may be like this. It may consist only of one set. Or it may consist of more sets. If so, some two of them, are strongly connected. Uh, how can we put some more 
sets here. First way to put is to put it having these two elements in common with both previous sets and having one element more. Uh, if it is like that, then if we try to put some more, uh, one more set here, it might be connected in the same way. Uh, if it's not connected in the same way, then it's connected, for example, with two elements from here. Now it has one element in common with this set and one element in common with this set. It can't be like that in an, in an independent set. So this element must be in both of these sets because this set and those sets have to has, have two points uh, in common, two elements in common. But this element can't be in this set and in this set and not be this element. So uh, this case isn't possible. So uh, some components look like uh, flowers with or stars with two elements in the center and some um, more elements here. And other way is when two elements are connected. And the third vertices are strongly connected. And the third vertex connected with some of them is not connected with their middle elements, but is connected with some two animals of one set and some two animals of another set. Uh, it might be done like this. And now we have only one way to put here one more set, one more vertex. So the same is to make a set of this element, this element, and this element. Now let's count how many vertices and how many elements are in each variant. In this variant, here are four vertices and four elements. In this variant, if we have n plus two elements, we have n vertices. If this, and this variant is quite the same. We have three elements and one vertex. Uh, there, now let's look at all the animals. Now let's look at all the elements and, and all our big independent set. It consists of some blocks of four drawn there, several blocks of four. And several, several flowers. Uh, if there are more than one flower, we can reorganize them in a one bigger flower and get more vertices in this way. This operation can't be held in the greatest independent set. So we can only think of independent sets that consist of some blocks of four and a flower. Uh, also, we might think that this flower has not more than five elements. If it has more than five elements, we can remove four elements from there and the structure remained will also be a flower and the difference between number of elements in all the set and number of vertices in all the set will remain being the same. And now let's think of an answer for different n, and might be like this, then the best variant is having k blocks of four. n might be 
like this, then it is a, then there are k blocks of four and a small flower which consists only of one set and might be have a rest two when being divided by four, then it consists of k blocks of four and two more elements and and uh, really two animals, they also give us some little, little flower because there are two elements and zero vertices. And n might be for k plus one. Uh, if it is so, there are two variants. The first variant, if you have k blocks of four and one more element, and the second variant, if you have K minus, K minus one block of four and the flower of five elements, like this one. If we have such a flower, we can transform it into an element staying aside and four elements making a block of four. And here we had five elements and three vertices. And here we have five elements at four vertices, which is better. And if the if our independent set was the greatest, uh, such, a such a transformation wouldn't have been done. Now in all of these variants, we get the answer between n and n minus two. That was the problem number 19. Okay, so we'll discuss some problems uh, of the project. Thank you for your attention and thank you for watching it. Good luck. Uh, yes, thank you, Lisa.